Rachel, have you heard about the independence assumption? Yes, I have, Peter. I am really tired of having to worry about all these assumptions. Yes, they are tiresome, but they can mean the difference between guilty and not guilty. What? Are you nuts or something? I was talking about the independence assumption, not the assumption of innocence. Heard you the first time, and yes, I was talking about the independence assumption too. So, what is this all about, guilty or not guilty? Well, there was the case against Sally Clark. It was basically upheld because an expert witness said that the chances of two of her children dying from sudden infant death syndrome were one in seventy-three million. Wow. She must have been really guilty. Well, no. You see, the chances of having a child die from sudden infant death syndrome were apparently about to one in eight thousand five hundred. So he squared that figure to come up with the one in seventy-three million. So, still very much guilty. Well, only if you think that the two deaths were independent of each other. Why would they not have been? Well, think about it. The two children share the same parents, that is, genes and the same environment. Thus, the chances of the second child also dying from sudden infant death syndrome are much higher. Thus, it is no longer one in eight thousand five hundred. Ergo, the one in seventy-three million figure is wrong. So, what happened? Well, she was found guilty initially, but then there was a retrial, and she was found not guilty after spending several years in prison. The journalist Jeffrey Wanzel called Clark's experience, and I quote, "one of the great miscarriages of justice in modern British legal history." Unquote. Wow! I guess I should care a bit more about assumptions. I might just Google this and find out some more. Yes, after all, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing.